Hello welcome to my channel. Today I am going to go through the BMAT 2014 section 1. If you found this video informative, please like, comment and share this video. Now let the explaining begin. Question 1. The table below shows audience numbers and time per visit for a number of popular social networking sites. A comparison of figures for the month of February is shown for two consecutive years. How many sites had an increase in both audience numbers and time per visit from 2007 to 2008? The correct answer is D because of the following. The trick to this question is comparing the correct columns, most importantly that the 2007 column is on the right and the 2008 column is on the left. When comparing the figures for audience and time per visit between 2007 and 2008 we can see that five sites had an increase in both categories. These are myspace.com, facebook, linkedin, meetup.com, last.fm thus, option D is correct. Question 2. There is a tendency to think that carnivores, given their precarious place at the top of the food chain, are the most at risk from extinction. Yet over the course of history it is likely that the opposite has been the case. Herbivores are often more specialist, evolved to suit a particular environment, to eat a particular plant. Carnivores, on the other hand, have tended to retain a more general set of attributes, teeth that could cut as well as chew, physical agility and acute senses, making them less vulnerable to changes in environment. After all, meat remains meat through even the most dramatic of environmental upheavals, whereas grassland might be converted to forest, with serious consequences for the herbivores that are grazing specialists. Which one of the following best expresses the conclusion of the above argument? The correct answer is C because the passage makes the point that carnivores may appear to be more at risk of extinction than herbivores due to the fact that they are at the top of the food chain. However, the passage goes on to provide evidence of how carnivores are likely to be able to adapt to environmental changes whereas herbivores are often more specialist and thus more likely at risk of extinction. Question 3. A password to open the safe in a hotel room uses an array of five names in a particular order selected from the names of the members of the owner's family. They are Rick, Betty, Oscar, Gavin, Yasmin, Graham and Bertha. In any password a name can only be used once and no two names with the same starting letter are allowed. Jeremy is trying to remember the password he set and tries, Betty, Rick, Oscar, Gavin, Yasmin, the safe doesn't open because whilst the second, fourth and fifth names are correct, the first and third names are wrong. Which of these could be the correct combination to open the safe? The correct answer is E because of the following. The text states that names cannot be repeated, and no two names can have the same first letter. Therefore, if the second, fourth and fifth positioned names are correct, the only options left are Bertha, Betty and Oscar for the first and third positions. The code cannot include both Bertha and Betty as they both start with a B and therefore one of the positions must be Oscar. As Oscar was incorrect in the third position, Oscar must be the correct option for the first position. Therefore, the only two possible solutions are Oscar, Rick, Bertha, Gavin, Yasmin, option E. Oscar, Rick, Betty, Gavin, Yasmin, option not given. Betty is not given as an option for the third position in the answers and thus option E is correct. Question 4. Since the late 1990s wolves have been seen in the Haute France region of the Alps. This places them once again in conflict with the shepherds who farm this region. Due to the protected status of the European wolf, French farmers are awarded a compensation payment for the loss of any of their sheep to a wolf. This payment amounts to considerably more than the livestock value of the animal. In addition to this, it is very difficult to distinguish between evidence of a wolf attack and dog attack. France has a population of 8 million dogs, 8,000 of these are estimated to be wild compared to only 200 wolves. Which one of the following is a conclusion that can be drawn from the above passage? The correct answer is B because the passage provides a series of facts that support this conclusion. For example, dog attacks are indistinguishable from wolf attacks and there are significantly more wild dogs than wolf attacks. Furthermore, there is the implication that farmers may wish to report a dog attack as a wolf attack as they are only compensated for the loss of livestock if a wolf has attacked. Thus, this is a fair conclusion to draw. Question 5. This is part of a tiled floor in my house, surrounding a space where I have removed a broken tile. 
Each tile has a pattern of 16 smaller squares, three of which are black. On each tile, one of the black squares is a corner square, one is an edge square, and one is an inner square. No two black squares touch, either edge to edge or corner to corner. Although I laid the tiles to produce an apparently random pattern, I made sure that no two black squares touched anywhere, either edge to edge or corner to corner. Which one of the eight different tiles that are available must I use to replace the broken one? Tiles may be rotated. The correct answer is G. Question 6. Perfect pitch. The ability to identify any note of music without inferring it from a reference note is usually found to be a characteristic only of people who were taught music before the age of six. So teaching music to children under the age of six should become a priority in primary schools. This could mean that in the future, most of the population would have perfect pitch. Which one of the following describes a flaw in the above argument? The correct answer is B because the passage makes a rather large leap in logic from the finding that perfect pitch is usually only found in individuals taught music before the age of six to claiming that we should teach music to primary school children such that most of the population can have perfect pitch. This train of logic assumes a cause and effect relationship between learning music before the age of six and having perfect pitch. It is possible that other factors are more important and being ignored by this argument. Thus, this is a flaw in the argument for primary schools prioritizing music teaching. Question 7. When I buy my favorite brand of coffee from the supermarket I normally have a choice of three jar sizes, as follows. Small is 100 grams, medium is 200 grams, large is 400 grams at present. All three jars contain 25% extra for the normal price and, in addition, customers who buy a large jar get a small jar free. For customers who buy a large jar of coffee, what is the total extra percentage of coffee for the normal price of the large jar? The correct answer is E because of the following. The first part of this question is calculating the total amount of coffee that is bought with the various offers. The large jar contains 25% extra meaning the weight of coffee in the jar is 400 divided by 100 multiplied by 125 equals 500 grams. The offer also states that when buying a large jar the customer also gets a free small jar which itself contains 25% extra. Thus, the weight of coffee in the small jar is 100 divided by 100 multiplied by 125 equals 125 grams. Therefore, the total weight of coffee received when buying a large jar is 500 plus 125 equals 625 grams. The percentage increase from a normal 400 grams large jar to this is 625 minus 400 divided by 400 multiplied by 100 equals 56.25%. Therefore, option E is correct. Question 8. If the cohort is typical of the population aged 65 or over, what are the chances of someone without dementia developing it during the eight-year follow-up period? The correct answer is B because in paragraph 2 it states that of the 7,008 over 65 people originally without dementia, 632 developed dementia. As a percentage this is, 632 divided by 7,008 multiplied by 100 equals 9.02% thus, option B is correct. Question 9. In the second to last paragraph Dr. Karen says it can be very difficult to tease out cause and effect. Which one of the following could be an alternative explanation of the finding that anesthesia increases the risk of dementia? Option C is correct because an alternative to general anesthesia increasing the risk of dementia is a third factor that connects these two factors. Thus, a lifestyle factor that increases both the likelihood of needing general anesthesia and the risk of dementia could be an alternative explanation for the trend shown. Question 10. Which one of the following additional pieces of information, if true, strengthens the case for general anesthesia increasing the risk of dementia? Option D is correct because the fact that efforts were made to ensure that the study had a representative sample reduces the chance that the additional risk of dementia was the result of a factor other than general anesthesia. Therefore, if true, this strengthens the case for general anesthesia increasing the risk of dementia. Question 11. If a smoker who is typical of the cohort in this study does not undergo general anesthetic, what is the probability that they will develop dementia in later life? The correct answer is E because of the following. The text states that general anesthesia increases the risk of dementia later in life by 35%, regardless of lifestyle. 
The text also states that a smoker who has undergone general anesthesia has a 27% likelihood of developing dementia later in life. Therefore, 27% risk represents 1.35, 35% increase, times the normal risk of dementia for a smoker since general anesthesia increases the risk by 35% regardless of lifestyle. Thus, removing the additional effect of general anesthesia, a smoker who has not undergone general anesthesia would have a probability of developing dementia of 27 divided by 1.35 equals 20% therefore, option E is correct. Question 12. One of the games at a charity fundraising event was guess how many jelly beans are in the jar. Prizes were awarded according to how close the guesses were to the exact number. The results of the game are shown below in the table. How many jelly beans were in the jar? The correct answer is D because of the following. From the table we know that 125 is closer to the correct answer than 140, but that 140 and 142 is closer to the correct answer than 121. Using this information, option A is incorrect as 129 is closer to 121 than 142. Option B is incorrect as 130 is closer to 121 than 142. Option C is incorrect as 131 is closer to 121 than 142. Option D is correct as 132 is closer to 142 than 121, but also closer to 125 than 140. Option E is incorrect as 133 is closer to 140 than 125. Question 13. Recorded crime figures, the figures which police authorities produce, have always been a poor way to identify crime trends. They are really a measure of police activity and priorities. A big operation to tackle knife crime, for instance, may uncover and record many more offenses involving knives, it does not mean knife crime is rising. Added to that, there is an inbuilt temptation for police officers to adjust their crime figures when targets need to be met. As with all recorded activity or performance data, there is always a risk of inaccuracy, confusion and fraud. A much more reliable measure of crime is the Crime Survey of England and Wales which produces figures by asking people if they have been victims of crime. Which one of the following is a conclusion that can be drawn from the above passage? The correct answer is E because the passage provides reasons why police crime figures may be incorrect and suggests that surveying people directly is a more accurate method. Therefore, this is a fair conclusion to draw from the passage. Question 14. The drawing below shows a pictorial view of a model for a house. Which two of the drawings above show possible side views of the model? Option F is correct because of the following. View 1 is correct as this could in theory show the back right view of the house that is hidden in the pictorial view. View 2 is incorrect. Whilst this is similar to what could be the back left view of the house that is hidden, the proportion of the smaller section of the model to the larger section is incorrect. View 3 is incorrect. This could not be any of the shown views of the house. Furthermore, it could not be the back right view as the top roof slopes in the wrong direction. View 4 is incorrect. This could not be any of the shown views of the house. The tall roof is on the wrong side for this to be a view of the hidden back left view of the model. View 5 is incorrect. The tall roof is on the wrong side for this to be a view of the front right of the model. View 6 is correct. This could be a view of the hidden back left side of the model house. The proportions of the tall roof to short roof are much closer to the model shown than view 2. Therefore, views 1 and 6 are possible views of the model. Thus, option F is correct. Question 15. Plans to share the medical records held by doctors on a national database have had to be shelved as a result of public pressure. Yet the public's hostility to this proposal is misguided. Of course people's medical records are personal matters, which they might not want divulged. And yet, while it is in everyone's interests to maintain a degree of privacy, for their own peace of mind, it is also in their interests for medical science to find new treatments for ill health. If the data were allowed to be shared, medical researchers would have access to an enormous pool of data, which could advance their understanding of illnesses and how they are caused. Which one of the following is an assumption underlying the above argument? 
The correct answer is A because the article states that having people's medical data on a national database is beneficial because it would facilitate the progression of medical science and treatments. For this to be the case the passage assumes that the benefit to medical science outweighs the loss of personal privacy to the individual by putting the data in such an accessible format. Question 16. Ben designs booklets for companies to use for their marketing. The price that he charges is based on the number of pages in the booklet and whether the booklets are black and white or color. His prices are summarized in the following table. Ben also offers a printing service. Printing 100 booklets in black and white costs $20 and printing 100 booklets in color costs $30. An 8-page booklet is required. How much more would it cost for the booklet to be designed and 500 copies made if it is in color rather than black and white? The correct answer is D because of the following. Looking at the 8-page booklet route, to design a booklet is $60 more for color than for black and white booklets. Furthermore, the printing will be $10 greater per 100 booklets. Therefore, for 500 copies the difference in cost between black and white and color would be 60 plus 50 equals $110 therefore option D is correct. Question 17. We are all becoming used to warnings of a shortage of science, technology, engineering and mathematics STEM recruits. In a world increasingly dominated by careers that involve these fields, organizations and politicians repeatedly state that we really must train more of these people to secure our prosperity. But STEM training is not the only answer. Anecdotal evidence shows that the STEM employees who do best are those most skilled in thinking and communicating. Instead of looking to produce scientists or engineers, we should focus on turning out agile minds. The ability to process, synthesize and communicate information efficiently is the premium skill of the future. Which one of the following best expresses the flaw in the argument above? The correct answer is D because the passage states that STEM employees who do the best have the most agile minds. From this evidence the passage claims that we should be focusing on training people to have agile minds. However, this assumes that agility of mind is the useful skill regardless of if it is accompanied by STEM training or without when no evidence is presented to support this. Thus, this is the major flaw of the argument. Question 18. The draw for the quarterfinals of the Staveland Cup took place last night. Eight balls, numbered from 1 to 8, were drawn, one by one, from a bag. The numbers represented the teams involved, as follows. 1 clefts, 2 crotchets, 3 flats, 4 keys, 5 minims, 6 quavers, 7 semibreves, 8 sharps. The first two teams drawn out of the bag will play each other, as will the third and the fourth, the fifth and the sixth, and the last two. Although the balls were drawn out at random, they alternated between even and odd numbers, and there was always a difference of at least three between one ball and the next. The first number drawn was six, quavers, and the last number drawn was five, minims. Which teams will the quavers and the minims play in the quarterfinals of the Staveland Cup? The correct answer is C because of the following. He text states that numbers are drawn alternating between odd and even and that the result of the draw was that between adjacent numbers there was always at least a difference of three. Therefore, the number three can only be placed between six and eight, as all other even numbers are less than three difference to it. Thus, the first three numbers must have been six, three, eight. The next odd number must be at least three different from eight and can't be five, as we know this is the last drawn number. Therefore, the next number must be 1, 4 must follow 1, 3 difference rule, and then the remaining numbers are in the 7 and 2 fill the last positions before 5. Therefore, the sequence of the draw must have been 6, 3, 8, 1, 4, 7, 2, 5. Therefore, the quavers, 6, played the flats, 3, and the minims, 5, played the crotchets, 2. Thus, option C is correct. Question 19. Which of the following is a safe inference to draw from the above data? 1. London has the highest crime rate in the country. 2. The number of sentences handed down in Yorkshire was more than twice that of Wales. 3. In the northwest, more than 6 out of every 1,000 population have been sentenced in 2010. Statement F is correct because of the following. Statement 1 cannot be drawn from the data because sentencing rates rather than absolute crime rates are shown. Statement 2 can be inferred. Number of sentences in Yorkshire, 0.64% of 5 million is approximately 32,000. 
number of sentences in Wales, 0.50% of 3 million is approximately 15,000. 32,000 is more than twice 15,000, therefore statement 2 can be inferred. Statement 3 can also be inferred. In the northwest, 0.62% of the population have been sentenced. This is 6.2 in 1,000 which is more than 6 out of every 1,000. Therefore, option F is correct. Question 20. Which one of the following is the best estimate of the ratio of sentences to population in London? The correct answer is C because from the table, we can see that 0.55% of the population have been sentenced. This is a ratio of 0.55, 100 equals 1, 181.8. Therefore, option C is correct. Question 21. Given the following information, which of the assumptions listed, if any, are required for this argument? Table 1 shows that there were 25,000 sentences handed down in the southwest region in 2010. Table 2 shows that 0.4% of recorded offences were arson attacks, revealing that in the southwest exactly 100 arson sentences were given for arson in that year. 1. The number of recorded arson attacks in the southwest is proportionate to the total number of such attacks across all regions. 2. The number of recorded offences in each region is the same as the number of sentences in that region. The correct answer is C because of the following. Assumption 1 is required for this argument. The calculation to produce the figure of 100 arson sentences was applying the national percentage of arson attacks to the total number of offences recorded in the southwest region in 2010. Thus, the sum made was 250,000 divided by 100 multiplied by 0.4 equals 100. Therefore, it was assumed that the proportion of offences being arson offences in the southwest was equal to the proportion in all regions. Assumption 2 is also required for this argument. The first table relates to sentences whilst the second table relates to recorded offences. Therefore, to combine the information, the assumption is needed that these are the same as each other. Thus, option C is correct. Question 22. There have been various proposals over the years for a system of decimal time. Under one system the day would remain the same length of time as it is at present, but would be the basic unit of time, divided into 10 decide days each made up of 100 millidays. Clocks would show the time in decide days and millidays instead of hours and minutes. Midday would be 0 hundred and midnight would, therefore, be 5 o'clock. If this system were ever to be introduced and a new style digital clock was compared with an old style digital clock, what would the old clock read when the new clock showed 1 to 75? The correct answer is C because of the following. 1 to 75 on the new clock equals 1 decide day and 75 millidays past midday. If a single day is 24 hours, then a decide day is 2.4 hours equals 2 hours 24 minutes equals 144 minutes. A milliday would equal 0.024 hours equals 1.44 minutes. Therefore, 1 decide day and 75 millidays equals 144 plus open brackets 1.44 multiplied by 75 close brackets equals 144 plus 108 equals 252 minutes equals 4 hours and 12 minutes. Therefore, 1 to 75 equals 4 hours and 12 minutes past midday or 1612. Therefore, option C is correct. Question 23. Memory loss and growing mental incapacity used to be seen as inevitable consequences of aging. Now we talk of dementia as an illness that could possibly be cured or prevented. The incidence of new cases of dementia is falling. A survey in the UK in 1994 revealed roughly 650,000 cases of dementia. With a subsequent increase in the average age at death, a survey in 2013 should have found nearly 900,000 cases, but in fact the total was less than 700,000. Why should this be so? Over the same period rates of heart disease have fallen, and in general the health of the blood vessels of the elderly has improved. Given that brain function requires the supply of oxygen to the brain from blood vessels, the improvement in the health of blood vessels. Which one of the following most logically completes the above argument? Option D is correct because this concluding remark points to the improvement in blood vessel health and reduced new dementia cases being linked whilst also accepting the possibility of additional factors being involved. Question 24. 
four friends need to stay in a hotel for one night after a concert. They are working out what it is going to cost them. The prices per room are as follows, single, £40, double, £65, family, £90, this is up to a max of three adults, special offers, 10% discount for four rooms in a single booking, 5% discount for three rooms in a single booking, one of them has a voucher for £10 which can be used once for a booking of a double room. What is the cheapest option? As the double room is £15 cheaper than two single rooms, the 10% discount, £8 off per two single rooms, does not make single rooms cheaper than double rooms. The next comparison to make is between two double rooms and one single and one family rooms. Whilst a single and a family room, 90 plus 40 equals £130, would be initially the same price as two double rooms, 65 plus 65 equals £130, the £10 off voucher can only be applied to the booking of a double room making two double rooms the cheaper option at 130 minus 10 equals £120, therefore, option B is correct. Question 25. Next time you feel the flu coming on, you should think twice before reaching for painkillers because they could do more harm than good by increasing the transmission of flu. Obviously painkillers can make you feel better by reducing muscle pains and headaches, but they also lower fever. Fever is thought to be an antiviral weapon, because many viruses find it hard to replicate at temperatures higher than the normal human body temperature. Some studies have shown that lowering fever can prolong viral infections and increase the amount of the virus that can be passed on to others. Which one of the following, if true, strengthens the above argument? Option B is correct because by returning to work earlier, the infected individual will come into contact with more people, another factor that increases the rate of viral spread. Thus, this statement would mean that painkillers increase viral spread on two fronts strengthening the argument of the passage. Question 26. Most people remember a PIN because it has only four digits and it is used regularly, but few know their bank account number. I have no trouble remembering my eight-digit account number, however, because squaring each of the four digits of my debit card PIN in turn produces it. All the digits of my account number are different, and there is no zero in it. Which other digit does it not contain? The correct answer is D because of the following. The account number is formed from four square numbers with none possessing a zero. The two-digit square numbers are as follows, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64 and 81. Regardless of what combination of numbers are used, the digit 7 is not found in any of them. Therefore, option D is correct. Question 27. Drivers of motor vehicles are not the only threat to the safety of pedestrians. Official road casualty statistics for 2012 show that, per billion kilometers traveled, cyclists seriously injured 21 pedestrians, compared with 24 pedestrians seriously injured by vehicle drivers. Cyclists who ride on the pavement are regarded as a problem by pedestrians, but statistics show that most collisions between pedestrians and cyclists occur when pedestrians step into the road without seeing a cyclist. Analysis of road casualty data shows that cyclists killed 23 pedestrians in the decade to 2012 and seriously injured 585. Assuming that 2012 is a representative year, which of the following conclusions can be drawn from the above passage? 1. A pedestrian is almost as likely to be seriously injured by a cyclist as by a motor vehicle driver. 2. As a proportion of distance travelled, the risk of a cyclist causing serious injury to pedestrians is almost as great as the risk posed by vehicle drivers. 3. Pedestrians are less likely to be seriously injured by a cyclist when walking on a pavement than when stepping into the road. The correct answer is E because of the following. Conclusion 1 cannot be drawn from the passage. Whilst cyclists injure nearly as many pedestrians per billion kilometers as cars, to claim that a pedestrian is as likely to be injured by a cyclist as a car is to assume that there are an equal number of cycling miles and car miles completed on the road. This information is not in the passage and thus this cannot be concluded. Conclusion 2 can be drawn from the passage. This is similar to conclusion 1 but removes the need to assume an equal number of car and cycle miles traveled. Therefore, this can be drawn from the above passage as we know over the same distance cyclist injure nearly as many pedestrians as cars. Conclusion 3 can be drawn from the above passage. The passage states that most accidents involving cyclists and pedestrians occur on the road not on the pavement. Therefore, this can be concluded. Therefore, option E is correct. 
Question 28. The drawing below shows the outer surface of the net of a hexagonal package with geometric shaped windows in each side. The inner surface is painted black. Which one of the drawings could represent a correct side view of the assembled package? The correct answer is a because of the following. When looking at the front of the assembled shape, the two front shapes must be adjacent to each other on the net, ruling out option E, and the black inner shapes must be made by a shape that is two places to the left for the left-sided face and two places to the right for the right-sided shape. Option A is correct because the diamond is two places to the left of the left-pointing triangle and the vertical rectangle is two spaces to the right of the square. Option B is incorrect because the diamond is two places to the right of the upward-pointing triangle, not the vertical rectangle. Option C is incorrect because the upward-pointing triangle is two places to the left of the diamond, not the square. Option D is incorrect because the leftward-pointing triangle is two places to the right of the diamond, not the horizontal rectangle. Question 29. Half a million pregnant women are troubled by morning sickness each year in the UK, but this phenomenon is still not fully understood. One theory is that changing levels of hormones act on the brain to heighten an evolutionary adaptive response that helps prevent women from consuming substances that may be harmful. Although less important in the developed world, in the past this would have helped to protect a fetus during the first three months of pregnancy when it is at the most vulnerable stage of development. If the mother eats less and sticks to simple foods, she is less likely to accidentally ingest something dangerous. Which of the following would strengthen the theory presented in the above argument? 1. Morning sickness symptoms normally decline after the third month of pregnancy. 2. Pregnant women sometimes have strange food cravings. 3. Women with morning sickness tend to eat less and opt for very simple and bland food. The correct answer is E because of the following. Option 1 would strengthen the argument of the passage. The passage argues that morning sickness is an evolutionary adaptation to prevent a woman eating dangerous substances during the critical periods of pregnancy, the first three months. Therefore, this argument would be strengthened by the finding that morning sickness declines after the third month. Option 2 would not strengthen the argument. Strange food carvings are more likely to introduce dangerous substances to the fetus as the woman is eating food she normally would not. Option 3 would strengthen the argument presented. The passage claims that the evolutionary adaptation of morning sickness is so that pregnant women eat less than a simple diet to reduce the risk of introducing dangerous substances to the fetus. The finding that morning sickness actually reduces a woman's appetite and limits them to bland food is evidence supporting this theory and thus strengthens the argument. Therefore, option E is correct. Question 30. There are three stations on a single track railway. The middle station of Leiden has two platforms and two separate tracks, each capable of taking any size train using the track. The express leaves Singaporean station at 12 o'clock noon and travels at an average speed of 60 miles per hour between stations. The post train leaves Snelling station at 12 o'clock noon and travels at an average of 30 miles per hour between stations. Each train remains at Leyden station for at least 5 minutes. What is the earliest time of arrival for the express at Snelling station, given that both trains leave at 1200? The correct answer is D because of the following. To get to Snelling, the express must pass the post train at Leyden as there is only single track either side of this station. The arrival times of the two trains to Leyden are as follows. Express, 10 miles at 60 miles per hour takes 10 minutes. Therefore, the express gets to Leyden at 12.10. Post train, 15 miles at 30 miles per hour takes 30 minutes. Therefore, the post train gets to Leyden at 12.30. Therefore, the express cannot leave Leyden until 12.30. The 15-mile journey between Leyden and Snelling will take the express train 15 minutes. Therefore, the express gets to Snelling at 12.45 at the earliest. Thus, option D is correct. Question 31. The diagram below represents all the ferry routes between the islands in the Kuzi group. Each ferry runs a shuttle service between two islands. The journeys between the main central island, Nola, and each of the outer islands take 30 minutes in either direction and all journeys between two of the outer islands take 45 minutes. 
All journeys on each route and in both directions start at 6 a.m. and no journey starts at or after 9 p.m. Start times for routes between Nola and the Outer Islands, 6 o'clock, 6.45, 7.38, 15, 9 o'clock, etc. Repeating every three hours start times for routes between the Outer Islands, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, etc. It takes between 5 and 10 minutes to walk between ferry docking points on all the islands. What is the smallest number of individual trips needed to visit all the islands, starting and finishing at Nola? The correct answer is C because of the following. To visit all the islands starting and finishing in Nola, a trip from Nola to Ixi to Kaxi to Ixi back to Nola is essential. Furthermore, a trip from Nelia to VC back to Nelia is also necessary. Therefore, an example of a route requiring the minimum number of trips is, Nola to Nelia to VC to Nelia to Kome to Nola to Ixi to Kaxi to Ixi to Nola this requires 9 individual ferry trips. Therefore, option C is correct. Question 32. What is the longest time one might be on Nelia if arriving from Nola, then leaving by the next available ferry that same day to VC? The correct answer is D because of the following. The ferries from Nola to Nelia leave either on the hour, at 15 past, at 30 past or at 45 past the hour. As the journey takes 30 minutes, the ferry can arrive at any of these times. The ferry leaves Nelia to VC on the hour. As there is a walk of 5 to 10 minutes between docking points, someone arriving at Nelia on the hour would not be able to take the ferry going to VC on the hour and thus would have to wait an hour for the next ferry. Therefore the longest wait would be 1 hour. Question 33. What is the longest time it could take from Kaxi to Nelia by the most direct route, assuming the next available ferry that same day is always taken? The correct answer is C because of the following. The route would be Kaxi, Ixi, Nola, Nelia the journey time is 45 minutes from Kaxi to Ixi. The ferry from Ixi to Nola would be one hour after the leave time from Kaxi, meaning a 15-minute wait on Ixi. In the worst-case scenario, a ferry would be leaving for Nelia as you arrived on Nola meaning a 45-minute wait on Nola. Therefore, the total journey time at its longest would be, 45, Kaxi to Ixi, plus 15, wait on Ixi, plus 30, Ixi to Nola, plus 45, wait on Nola, plus 30, Nola to Nelia, equals 165 minutes equals 2 hours 45 minutes. An alternative approach is, 45, Kaxi to Ixi, plus 45, wait on Ixi, plus 30, Ixi to Nola, plus 15, wait on Nola, plus 30, Nola to Nelia, equals 165 minutes equals 2 hours 45 minutes. Therefore, option C is correct. Question 34. Which of the following statements is, are true about journeys from Kome to Ixi, assuming the next available ferry that same day from Nola is always taken? 1. Journeys from Kome to Ixi never take less than 1 hour 15 minutes. 2. Journeys from Kome to Ixi never take longer than 2 hours. The correct answer is C because of the following. Statement 1 is correct. The two ferry journeys, from Kome to Nola and then Nola to Ixi, take 30 minutes each. Furthermore, there is always at least a 15-minute wait on Nola for the ongoing ferry. Therefore, the journey cannot take less than 1 hour 15 minutes. Statement 2 is correct. As the passage states the journey through Nola is taken, in the worst-case situation, there would be a 45-minute wait on Nola, making the total journey time 1 hour 45 minutes, e.g. leave comb at 7 o'clock, miss the 7.30 and get the 8.15 from Nola to Ixi. Therefore, option C is correct. Question 35. Miko commutes from Ixi to Nelia each morning starting on the 7.30 a.m. ferry. One day when he arrives at the Ixi terminal, he finds that the Nola to Nelia ferry is not running. How much later than normal will he arrive at work? The correct answer is B because of the following. We know that the Outer Islands ferries leave on the hour. So that means the ferry leaving Ixi leaves at 7 o'clock. The 7 o'clock ferry from Ixi arrives at Nola at 7.30. As we know that it takes 30 minutes to go between islands. Miko usually take the 8.15 to Nelia, arriving at 8.45, but instead will have to go to Nelia via comb. Therefore, he will arrive on Comb at 8.45 and then get the 9am ferry to Nelia from Comb arriving on Nelia at 9.45. Therefore, he will be there one hour later. Thus, option B is correct.